All right. So throughout the course, uh, we're going to use the same project, same set of facts, and we're going to subject the project to different methodologies. So we are going to be subjecting the same project, the same set of facts, to different methodologies to see what the methodologies do, how they do it, and what kind of results we get. So the project has been summarized with a hammock activity to path A, which is critical. It has nine months. We have path B, eight months. And both of them are predecessors to this Finnish activity, which is one month. This is our ask plan. This area in gray represents um, bad weather, winter weather. And, and path A, activities in path A are able to work on winter-related months. But activities in path B and the Finnish activity are not able to work during the winter time. The as built schedule has all kinds of issues. We have contractor responsible delays like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have owner responsible delays, one, two, three, four. We have a third party delay. And then we have acceleration, a month of acceleration. So we have owner responsible delays, contractor responsible delays, uh, third party delays, and acceleration. And on top of that, we have a weather calendar, a weather calendar that affects path B and path and the finished path. Neither of these two activities, neither of these two activities can take place during the winter months. On the other hand, path A, given the nature of the activities, is able to execute this work even during these winter months. The first technique that we're going to use is uh, the impact of this plan. And I wanted to start with this because it is a simple technique and that will get us um, uh, going in the way we think about these delay analysis. It's, it's also known as an additive type of uh, technique because we're going to be adding uh, delays to the as plan. We're going to be adding delays to the as plan. So this insertion of delays will be done typically after the project is finished um, to the as plan schedule to see what would be the theoretical projection of these delays on the baseline schedule. And the way to think about it is that by inserting these delays to the as plan, we're basically saying, if we have known about these delays right at notice to proceed, right at the start of the project, what would be the impact on the project completion like? That's what we're doing. Um, there are three flavors that I'm going to show you, three flavors of the same technique. The first one is, all delays are inserted at the same time. That's it. That's flavor number one. Flavor number two, we're going to first add only the contractor responsible delays, CRDs, and see how the CRDs affect the S plan. And we're going to contrast that with on the responsible delays and third party delays and see how those on the responsible delays and third party delays affect the project completion time. And then we're going to combine the contractor responsible delays and the on the responsible delays into one uh, as built, into one as planned analysis. Let me point out at this point that this, this B, flavor B, 5B, is the one that you are going to use for assignment number one. And then flavor C, uh, all the impacts are inserted one step at a time. 
we call this the stepped method. Uh, let me tell you one more thing about the as planned method, and that is that when it was conceived and the way it was applied, it was designed to compute the time extension. It was designed to calculate the time that the contractor would be granted for only responsible delays and um, third party delays. That was the original intent for the development of the S plan. Lately, we have been able to perform some uh, interesting gymnastics on it to be able to see if we can at least approximate concurrency so that we can then determine out of this time extension which is compensable and which is not. As you will see shortly, these are bold approximations. Uh, some of the negative uh, side effects of the S-Plan technique are obvious. One, it ignores the S-Built. It ignores 100% of how the project was actually built. As a result, it ignores, it ignores the shifts into the critical path. It ignores concurrency, but we're going to try to approximate such concurrency. Uh, constructive acceleration is not taken into account. It ignores constructive acceleration. And because it ignores the as-built conditions, it ignores any as built resequencing that took place during the actual project execution. So, let's begin with flavor number A, 5A. All delays are inserted simultaneously. Here we have the S plan, and here on the lower part, we have the impacted as planned with all delays minus the acceleration. It ignores acceleration, doesn't take into account acceleration. So we have the contractor responsible delays here, here, here. We have the owner responsible delays and we have the third party delays. As you can see, path B has to skip over the winter months. We knew that. Whereas path A is able to continue executing the work during the winter months. So after we globally insert, splice all delaying events into the ASP plan, we find that the project is projected to be completed in seven months later than the project completion time. Project completion time was month number 10, and now we are at the end of month 17. Month 17. So, this global insertion method works as you see, and after um, the insertion, we realized that the critical path, the critical path after inserting all the delays goes through path B, and that happens to be the longest path in the network. So let's count how many, remember, remember that the impacted as planned methodology was designed to compute the time extension the time extension, meaning on the responsible delays, ORVs. So let's count them. One, two, three, four. So we have four months of excusable and compensable delays. Four months of excusable and compensable delays. That's it. The contractor gets a four-month time extension based on this technique and all four months are compensable. 
that's what this technique was designed to calculate. Any additional time that the project needed to complete the project will be the contractor's responsibility. The owner is only responsible for four months and four are excusable and compensable. You can see that the third party delay right here that I'm pointing to did not affect the, the final critical path in the impact of this plan. So it had no effect. 